What if I told you you can use Claude Co to build your N8N workflows from scratch without you ever touching the canvas? I just discovered two MCP servers that make this possible. I've seen people use Claude Code for things other than coding, and a very popular use case seems to be generating N8N automations using Claude Code and MCP servers. So in this video, I wanted to explore two different servers that you can use. The first MCP server we'll look at is this N8N MCP server by Romwald. This server allows your agent to create and change your N8N workflows directly within your N8N instance. And the second MCP server we'll look at is the Playwright MCP server. Your agent will then use the browser to create and change your workflows the same way you and I would. Now, of course, you could use Claude Desktop to do all of this as well. You simply configure the MCP servers on Claude Desktop and you'll be able to follow along. But I will be using Claude Code and Claude Code will give me access to a few additional features like maybe saving the workflows in this project folder. First, let's have a look at this N8N MCP server. I will leave a link to these repos in the description of this video and you can also download all the prompts that I use from the description as well. When you scroll down with this repo, look for this full configuration section and then copy all of this content and then in your project folder, create a new file and call it .mcp.json and paste in all of that info. This configuration will work perfectly fine if you're using Linux, Mac, or Windows with WSL. If you're using Windows without WSL, like what I'm doing, you will have to change the command from npx to cmd, and then under args, add slash c, followed by npx and n8n mcp. Next, we have to provide the URL to our n8n instance. For instance, if you're running n8n locally, copy the URL, and then add it to this file, like so. Just be sure not to include any slashes at the end. And then for the API key, simply go to your settings, then under N8N API, click on create an API key. Let's give it a name like Claude Code. Let's save this, then copy the key and add it to your file. If you are running N8N in the cloud, then it's the exact same process. In fact, I'll be using my cloud instance throughout this video. So I'll go ahead and copy my URL and add it here. And then I'll create my API key. And that's actually it. We can go ahead and close this file. And now we're ready to use Claude code. So let's open the terminal and we can run Claude. Claude should tell you that it's automatically picked up that MCP file. So let's just say yes and proceed. I'm just going to add Claude to this top section. So we've got a bit more real estate. Then let's enter slash MCP. Now you should see your MCP server with the status of connected. Now this MCP server gives the agent access to a lot of different tools. This includes tools documentation, the list of available nodes. It's able to search for nodes and a lot more. I'm actually going to start Claude code in YOLO mode, so it won't ask my permission to do any of this. And let's try to get our agent to recreate this very specific workflow. So I want to use a chat trigger node, the AI agent node, then we'll use OpenAI as the LLM. We'll also attach simple memory so it can remember our conversation history, and we'll assign web search using SERP API. Right, so let's try that. So in Claude Code, we could say something like, use the N8N MCP tool to, to create the following workflow. But before we do that, we need to provide detailed instructions to the agent on how to actually use this MCP server. Now, thankfully, this developer already created this prompt for us. So if we scroll down, we can look for this section called Claude Project Setup. Let's copy this prompt and then back in our project, Let's create a claude.md file and paste in that prompt. I'm just going to create a new conversation so that Claude Code can pull in these instructions. And let's give this a spin. Let's say, please create a new N8N workflow. I want to create a simple chatbot with the following. And let's say, use OpenAI as the LLM provider and set the model to GPT-5 Mini. Also assign a simple memory node 
And finally, add the SERP API node to the agent. Okay, I think that's good enough. Let's run this and see what we get. All right, so the agent finished. And if we have a look, it effectively generated this JSON structure, which is not necessarily what we want. Also, if I refresh my NATN instance, I don't see the new chatbot either. So let's ask the agent, please can you create a workflow in my actual N8N instance? Right, the agent is saying that it was able to connect to the N8N API that's on my actual instance, and now it's busy creating the workflow. All right, it's saying the workflow was successfully created and validated. And if we switch back and refresh, we can see that new workflow showing up. So let's have a look at it. And this workflow is actually really messy and not at all what I wanted. It sort of used OpenAI and then loosely connected a bunch of nodes that don't really make a lot of sense. So here's the issue. You actually need to be very specific upfront to get the best out of this MCP server. So to help you with that, I've actually rewritten this prompt to give you even better results. So I'm going to replace this prompt with my new one. And as a reminder, you can get this prompt for free in the description of my video. And let's go back to Claude Code. I'm just going to start a new conversation so that all of these instructions pull in. And I'm going to run the exact same prompt again. And now this agent is doing something slightly different to the default prompt. So it's proposing a workflow, but it's also asking our feedback. So what kind of trigger type do we want? Do we want a chat trigger, a manual trigger, a webhook, etc.? It's also asking us about the model. Like you mentioned GPT-5 mini, but did you actually mean GPT-4.0 mini? And that is because GPT-5 mini was introduced after Claude Code was trained. So let's respond by saying, use a chat trigger node, and yes, use GPT-5 mini as the model. It was recently introduced. And for the memory, let's say, use the simple memory node. All right, I think that's good enough. Let's send this and let's see what our agent comes back with. What's also different is after the agent created the workflow, you can actually go to this workflows folder and see the workflow over here. So if you wanted to, you could manually import the workflow into N8N as well. Now at this stage, if I go back to the dashboard, I don't see that workflow yet. That's because it's only created the workflow within this workflows folder. Let's ask it, please create a workflow in my actual N8N instance. All right, let's have a look. All right, we now have this new workflow and this is already way better than what we got with the default prompt. I just have to move a few nodes around, but everything is there. Let's also open up this OpenAI node just to select our credentials. And I'll just do the same thing with the SERP API node. I'm only selecting the credentials and that's actually it. Let's test this workflow. So let's say, hey, and we get our response back. And if we have a look at our chat model node, GPT-5 mini was indeed selected. We can also use the server to make changes to the workflow. So let's do something basic. Let's say we want to change the system message of the agent. Let's say, please, change the system message of the agent to your name is Luna, a friendly customer support agent. Cool, let's send this. And that was really quick. It took less than like five seconds. Okay, let's go back to our project, refresh this, and then let's go to our agent. And indeed the system message was changed to your name is Luna, a friendly customer support agent. This is really cool. So again, you can download this prompt from the description of this video, and hopefully you saw that it produces way better results. Next, we'll give our agent access to the Playwright MCP server, and it will then create the workflows using the browser the same way you and I would. And I must tell you, it's actually super cool sitting back and watching the agent interact with the browser. Now you might be wondering where I'm hosting my NATN instances. NATN offers a cloud solution that you can sign up for at about 20 euros per month. And that is billed annually. Now I prefer a way cheaper solution for my N8N instances. And that is with Hostinger, which allows you to deploy N8N instances for only $7 per month. Hostinger is also giving my viewers an additional 10% off if you sign up using my code Leon. You'll find the link to Hostinger in the description of the video. 
And from there, you can simply choose your plan. So you can choose KMV1, which is only $5 per month, or KMV2, which is what I personally use. So I click on choose plan, and then you can change your term from one month to maybe 12 months or 24 months. Of course, you get the best deal if you go with 24 months, but if you only prefer one month, that's still only $10 per month, which again is way cheaper than N8N's official offering. If you select either 12 months or 24 months, you can get an additional 10% off by using this coupon code LEON. When we apply this, you'll get an additional 10% off. Of course, before you click on continue, at the bottom under applications, ensure that you have N8N selected. This means you don't have to set up the VPS yourself, Hostinger will do all the hard work for you. So I simply click on continue and continue with the checkout process. So I've set up a new KMV2 instance. So let's go to setup. I'll simply choose my location. Then let's click on next. And under application, I'm just going to search for N8N. Then enter a root password, click on next, click on finish setup. And this will take a few minutes to complete. Once installation completes, you can go back to your dashboard and you should be able to find your server over here. Click on manage, then again, click on manage app and that will take you directly to your N8N instance. How easy was that? Right, let's have a look at this Playwright MCP server. Scrolling down, we can simply copy this configuration. Then let's create a new file called .mcp.json. And let's add our configuration. And believe it or not, that's actually all we have to do. Check this out. Let's open up a new Claude instance. I'll just say yes, proceed. And let's add it to the top. And let's actually add a Claude.md file. And in here, I'm just going to say, your role is to create and manage N8N workflows using the Playwright MCP server. The N8N instance can be located at the link to my N8N instance. Whenever you require login credentials, please ask for the user's assistance. Cool, now let's close this. I'm going to start a new chat so that these rules get pulled in. And let's say, please create a new workflow with the following. I'll try to be a bit more specific here. Let's say, use a chat trigger node, use an agent node, use OpenAI as the LLM provider, and use GPT-5 mini as the model. Then, actually, let's just do that for now. We can make changes as we go along. Let's press enter. Now this is awesome. We can see a new browser window has opened up and our agent is trying to access N8N. Of course, it's now stuck at this login page and the agent is asking us to sign in or to provide our email and password. Now personally, I'm not going to share my email and password with Claude Code, so I'll just enter it in the browser. And that's done. All I did was I entered the username and password and signed in. So I'll just tell the agent I have signed in. Please continue. Right, let's go back to the browser and let's see what happens. All right, the agent actually created a new workflow. And in fact, I'm actually going to put these two side by side so we can see what the agent is doing in the terminal and in the browser. All right, so it seems like it's now trying to add the agent node. And that's cool. It was actually able to pull up the node menu. So let's see if it's able to find that AI agent node, which it actually did. All right, so the next step is it's trying to configure the OpenAI node. So we can see it actually found the OpenAI node and now it's trying to find our model and it decided to use GPT-40 mini. We'll try and fix it after this. And so far, this is looking very good. Let's request a few changes like, please add a simple memory node to the agent and also add web search by adding the SERP API tool to the agent as well. Cool, let's send this and sit back and have coffee and watch what the agent is doing. Cool, it was able to add the simple memory node. So now it's trying to add the SERP API tool. Let's see how that goes. Let's have a look. So we've got our AI agent node. And it's still using GPT-40 mini, so we can ask the agent to change that. Please change the model to GPT-5 mini. This model was 
introduced recently. All right, it's open up the OpenAI node. It's clicked on the drop down and it's selected GPT-5 mini. Awesome. I'm proactively going to send another message like, please could you rename the workflow with a suitable name. Also test the workflow to ensure the chat bot is working, that memory is working and that web search is working. And let's send this. I do want to mention that this server uses a lot of tokens. So I probably won't use it to build entire workflows every time. But what it's very useful for is actually testing your existing workflows. As you saw here, I gave it a very specific prompt to test the chatbot, test the memory, and to test web search. So what this agent will do is actually open up the chat window and start interacting with the agent. This is actually a brilliant solution for automating your workflow testing. So as we can see, our agent actually sent a message to this chatbot and we do get a response back. I find it super interesting to see how these agents are actually chatting to each other and running tests. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more cloud code and N8N content. Also remember to use my link in the description to sign up to Hostinger and to get a 10% discount. Then click on the card on the screen to watch my next video. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.